Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr Perutski. I'm here today to present you how to unleash the power of Intel GPU. A few words about me. I'm graphics software engineer at Intel Technology Poland. My job consists of games and benchmarks performance analysis. Uh, this means that I'm looking for opportunities to increase games FPS, and I provide feedback for game developers. Our goal is to bring the best experience for players on Intel platform. Okay, so why should we care about Intel GPU? According to statistics, Intel is one of the top uh, players on GPU market. As you can see, according to John Petty research, uh, Intel takes about 71% of GPU market. And why is that? Uh, the reason for that is 99% of Intel's CPUs uh, have graphics integrated. And according to Steam surveys and Unity statistics, from 13 to 17 a percent of players actually use Intel GPU. And that's a lot. Uh, if we assume that there is 125 million of players on Steam, then 30% is about 17 uh, million of players using Intel GPU. OK, I will start with discovering how Intel uh, GPU will help you analyze, optimize, and your uh, gaming application. So let's start it. GPA is simply a suite of tools that allows you, gives you possibility to find performance bottlenecks in your uh, gaming application. Our experience from work uh, shows that if you, uh, if you take time to fully understand how your game is executing your code, uh, then it will definitely pay off, and you will see some opportunities to increase game performance measured by FPS. Uh, GPA runs on most popular platforms like Windows, Ubuntu, Android. It supports supports uh, DirectX and OpenGL API. It can be run on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, but to take advantage of its full potential, I advise you to run it on Intel platform. Okay, how easy is GPA to use? It turns out very easy. Uh, it requires no code changes. Now, filling your code with instrumentation macro, just simply run, analyze, and have fun with optimizing your game. OK, let's meet our analyzers. Graphics Monitor is used to launch your application. It supports uh, even complicated uh, static mechanism like Steam and Origin. The powerful feature of this tool is that it allows uh, setting a capture triggers. Let's imagine that your game running is running uh, 60 FPS, and you get some random FPS drops in your game. It's hard to capture the single frame uh, by hand. Uh, what you can do is set that whenever the FPS drops below certain threshold, the frame is captured for further analysis. System Analyzer is one of the first tools that you likely to use. It allows you to connect to your application and gather real-time platform information. You can view highly detailed CPU and GPU metrics. And the real graphs, the real-time graphs helps you quickly uh, see whether your game is CPU or GPU bound. 
those uh, metrics are based on internal hardware counters, uh, analyzing your application on Intel platform gives you access to those highly detailed metrics. System analyzer, uh, our another powerful feature of system analyzer is the ability to run real time experiments. Uh, for example, when you run your application, you can, you can overwrite all textures with very simple one. And also you can disable, for example, depth testing. This can quickly show you where your problem with performance may lie. Uh, what's more, it also supports pausing the game and single frame step for your game to capture single frame issues. Another powerful tool in this suit is Platform Analyzer. It's used for monitoring both CPU and GPU activity at the same time. This tool helps you quickly see how efficiently you are using all computing resources. It's often early in development that uh, we have unbalanced workload. So for example, sometimes CPU is uh, busy, completely busy while GPU is idle. And this tool quickly shows you that information. And my favorite tool in this suit, Frame Analyzer, if you discover that you are GPU bound, uh, this is where you can do a deep dive into what's happening on GPU side. And this tool quickly shows you where on GPU the bottlenecks may be. You can inspect any texture, state, render target, geometry, and you can run experiments uh, for every single draw call. So you can change textures, uh, change any state without need for changing your code. You are doing this offline after capturing a frame from your game. It's uh, then after changing some states, the frame is recalculated to immediately show you to show you the uh, performance delta and the result of this experiment. OK, let's start a few words about performance analysis. Approaching to analysis, it's, we should first determine whether application is CPU or GPU bound. Uh, understanding the performance, the bottlenecks at this highest level, is extremely important. Otherwise, you may spend a lot of time optimizing part of your game that end up being insignificant. In CPU bound application, it may be uh, application code or driver that causes 100% of CPU utilization while GPU is idle waiting for tasks. In GPU bound application, uh, GPU is completely busy doing its tasks and actually CPU is waiting for completion of tasks on, of, on GPU. And while most of the games are GPU bound, it sometimes happened that there is a problem with synchronization of workload uh, between CPU and GPU. And last but not least, on low, po low power devices like smartphone or ultrabook, we may become power bound. On those devices, when we utilize both CPU and GPU highly, the device have to, uh, has to deal with sharing the power between CPU and GPU, and this also may cause some problems. OK, so how we determine the performance bottlenecks? If we have our game, 
we run system analyzer to gather real-time information metrics and carry out some what-if experiments. Then we decide whether application is CPU or GPU bound. If we see that game is GPU bound, we capture a frame and do offline analysis of frame with frame analyzer. And if we know that there is a problem with balancing workload between CPU and GPU, we capture a trace and do analysis with platform analyzer. So when we finally determine that there is a CPU that causes the performance degradation, we should fi find out what exactly causes the problem. It may be application code, some external libraries used, or even the driver. In this moment, I may advise you to use another Intel tool called Vtune. It's used for code profiling. OK, so a few words about GPU architecture. This is how uh, Intel's CPU looks like. As you can see, one third of the surface is taken by GPU. We have six cores in the last uh, Coffee Lake generation. And GPU architecture, uh, as we can see, the, we start with geometry uh, processing on the non-slice part of GPU. It's similar to DirectX pipeline. Then we do pixel processing. The data goes on a common slice for depth and stencil testing. Then on an execution unit, we actually run uh, pixel shaders. We do sampling, fetching of textures from sampler. We use L3 cache. And finally, uh, pixel backend is used to uh, do post-pixel shader tasks like blending, and the data is written to high-level memory through GTI interface. So we introduce methodology to find a perform, uh, to performance analysis. Uh, this is a specific way to look for uh, bottlenecks defined by this graph. It means that we go through the top of this graph to the bottom, looking if we uh, are bound on any specific unit. And as you can see, the bottlenecks are listed in reverse order comparing to execution flow. This is because, for example, if we are bound, are writing the final data to high-level memory, the stall, the waiting, may actually propagate to earlier stages. And we have the same graph in a GPU frame analyzer. Uh, it allows you to quickly see where the performance problem may be. And each bottleneck is defined by a set of metrics. Uh, for example, if we have more data requests to sampler to fetch textures than this unit is able to provide, then this is where we should should look for performance opportunities to improve the performance. OK, so case study one of analysis the GPU frame. This is example frame captured from a game that I recently analyzed. And what we can do at the beginning, we chose what to analyze. We choose either the longest draw call or set of draw calls. For this example, I have chosen this one draw call. It renders the terrain in a game, and it takes about 3.5 milliseconds to render it. As you can see, defined by this pink color, we actually GPU uh, waits for data for about 75% of time. And as we can see, 
on this graph on the right, uh, we are actually probably limited by sampler unit, which is used to, as I said, fetch the textures. And this is where we should look for opportunities. So we are looking at the textures. Actually, in this for this draw call, there were several draw, uh, textures, uh, very highly detailed, as you can see, of size 1,000 by 1,000. And this may cause the performance degradation in this, in this uh, moment. The solution may be to lower the resolution of the textures. We can carry out an experiment in the frame analyzer without changing your code. And we can set up the minimum level of details to five. It means that it takes uh, not the 1,000 by what one by 1000 texture, but 100 by 100, something like this. And actually, as we can see, the time lowered to two milliseconds. So it's a great uh, opportunity to look for, to improve the performance. But actually, this is not all. If we look at the state, the anisotropic filtering is used at this moment. It provides great uh, visual quality, but the performance really hurts. And what we can do is simply change the state to do a linear filtering of the texture. And after that, the frame is recalculated, and we can immediately see the performance improvement. And in this case, the time lowered even to one millisecond. So, and the uh, stall defined by this pink color is lowered to 30, about 30% 30 from 75 on the beginning. Okay, case study number two. This is another frame from a different game. And for this case study, I have chosen this set of draw calls. Those draw calls uh, renders, uh, uses the same shader and renders some soldiers in a game. It takes about 6.3 milliseconds to render this. And as we can see, um, defined by this gray color, actually GPU is idle for about 55 or 60%. And this means that execution units aren't working. So, and looking at the right, we can see that we are actually bound our geometry transformation. This means whenever the uh, geometry comes to GPU, it takes a lot of time to process this uh, geometry. And uh, efficiency of this unit is about almost 2%, so it's very low in this case. Looking at some metrics from the frame analyzer, we can see that we are using about 769,000 of triangles to be rendered in this case. And it renders only 41,000 of pixels. This means that the triangles are so small that even triangle, one triangle don't even cover one pixel. So it's a huge uh, overkill for GPU uh, because we have to process lots of data that aren't even used for rendering the final image. And on this example, you can see what is actually rendered. Ah, oh, sorry, I said that it was a part of uh, soldiers. No, I'm sorry. It was actually trees, some far away from the camera. So the details of those trees were very high, high and we produce only very few pixels. So the solution may be to lower the geometry details so that this unit will be utilized better and we then will not have this uh, 
execution units waiting for data from geometry transformation. And the case study number three. So for this case, I have chosen a set of draw calls that are bound on writing the final data to high level memory. And this unit actually saves the that final pixel colors to uh, high level memory. As we can see in this example, we are uh, saving the data to four render targets that are resolution, uh, full HD resolution. And actually what hurts is that we are using, the last one texture is using uh, Arch 16, B16, fl actually float. Uh, this texture is uh, really bad for, from the perspective of performance. And combination of four of those is really bad. And looking at the shader, we can see that there is actually there are actually writes of constant values to those shaders. So three of those, alpha channel of three of those is filled with one, and one of the textures is filled with black color with all zeros. So looking earlier in the list of calls to GPU, we can notice that we are clearing, clearing the render targets with all zeros. So the solution to improve the performance may be to uh, clear the render targets with alpha set to one and removing those writes from render target from shader and also removing the rights of black color defined by all zeros in this example, because actually the render target is cleared with this value by default. Okay, so summary. Besides tools, uh, Intel provides guidelines for developers. On our site, you can find two documents in those, there is a deep explanation of the topic I have just covered. The first one is addressed to those willing to understand how uh, GPU, uh, understand the architecture of Intel GPU. Inside, you will find overview of graphics hardware and how to design your software to take advantage of it. It will help you understand how GPU is working. The other one is designed for developers to optimize their applications. Inside, you will find instruction, code examples, step-by-step -step instruction, and tutorials that will help you with application development process. OK, so to sum up, uh, the GPA tool is free to use for everyone. So it can help you optimize application to work efficiently with Intel processor and GPU. Uh, as I said earlier, I invite you to read the developer guideline guides. Uh, inside you'll find overview of GPU and some tips for optimizing your code. Also, I advise you to uh, do a performance analyzing from the beginning and optimizing your game. It will save your time at the later stages of application development process. Also, remember that Intel takes about 71% of in of GPU market. It means lots of players with Intel GPU. And I advise you to use tools and optimize your games for uh, Intel GPU to provide, to reach more players and provide them with great experience. Okay, so thank you very much. Here are links for GPU tool 
and developer guides. Guides, feel free to email me. Email me if you have any question. I'm here to answer you. So thank you very much. Do you have any question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, you were talking about DirectX mo mostly. Yes. Uh, what about uh, OpenGL and maybe also other platforms than Microsoft Windows? Yes, though we also support in this tool OpenGL API, but my work consists mostly on uh, DirectX, so that's why I was talking about this. And also we support analyzing, analyzing of games on Ubuntu, macOS, and Android. So feel free to use it. Great, thank you. Does the tool support any of the new generation graphics APIs like DirectX 12 or Vulkan? Uh, yes, currently we support DirectX 12, but I'm not sure if it supports Vulkan API. Yes. You mean from the uh, CPU side? Yes. So I advise you to use Intel Vitium tool that supports this code profiling. And there you will find uh, more opportunity to optimize from the CPU side your application. OK, thank you so much.